well I tossed it all in. Um, my last couple parts of the B Pro I added slowly. I didn't figure there was any reason you guys had to hear the Hobart running. Um, so this is the consistency I got. You see how that fallen off the spatula? That's that's really what I want. That's going to be soft enough. The bees are going to take that down. And uh, again, add your three parts B Pro, and then slowly add the last little bit because what'll happen? Well, I explained in the first video. By the time you realize you got too much, then it's an uphill battle trying to add more water to it. So add those last couple parts slowly. That's what you want to get. Get this dough hook out of here. Now the main part of our business is selling stock. Uh, we sell bees and raise queens. Um, I often ask people, uh, especially a lot of, you know, new beekeepers, they start stressing out this time of year in March and they want to help their bees and do good by their bees and they want to feed patties. And one of the first things I ask them is, why? Um, if you have a few hives in your backyard, and if your bees don't need the pollen, why feed it to them? The reason I say that... is you could very well be making more work for yourself in spring, in swarming season. So I want to give my, my queens, my colonies, a little bit of a kick start in the spring, and get the queens going. Um, your colonies will, will rear a good round of brood off of pollen patties like this. When it hits that second round, nothing beats the real thing. Nothing beats good weather and real pollen coming into the hives. So here it is pushing the middle of March in the Shushwap, southern interior of BC. I'm just starting to feed patties. I have fed them as early as, the, as late February, um, but I don't think there's any point in feeding them any earlier. Because what you want to look for is on your calendar is when do the bees start bringing in you know pussy willow pollen and and th those first pollens that start coming in. Count back about three weeks that's when you want to start feeding patties. Um, because you want to give the your colonies a natural help, help the upswing. Because what will happen is if you start feeding pollen, pollen patties way too early you're going to stimulate brood production, uh, but the brood that's that's being raised is not as healthy as the real thing. So you're going to start getting this happening in your hive, and it's it's not healthy for the colonies. So around here, we're looking at about third, fourth week of March is our, our real first dependable pollen flow, when we actually get some good days, some good flight, and the bees can start bringing in some pollen. Count back three weeks, that's when you want to start doing this. Um, in my opinion, any earlier you're just, you're wasting money and you're stressing the colonies. Now if there is no pollen, you have to feed them because they're starving, that's a different issue. That means you didn't do things properly in the fall. <laughs> um, so what, what I'm putting these patties into is simply wax paper. I've ripped them into 12, 14 inch pieces. I got an old busted plastic spatula, kitchen reject. And my patties, they're going to be just over a pound. And uh, you know what? That's as precise as I get. I'm not going to make you watch me. Uh, put all these together, but what I did want to show you, it's very simple, just make your half moon, squish it together. When I put these on the hives, I'll take my hive tool and score two, three lines just to open it up so when I gently smoke the bees, put this in the top bars, 
It gives easy access to the bees. Now I put the pollen patties just in these three gallon buckets. Very handy for me. Um, now if you see how I've stacked them back to back inside the bucket, a little bit more. See, one, one of my favorite acronyms is KISS, keep it simple. So you can see how uh, much precision I uh, do this with. The second row that I put the patties in there, I just alternate them back to back. So I know when this bucket's full, I got oh, 35 pounds of patties. So, you know, about 30 patties in that bucket. Uh, because of the sugar content and the natural bee pollen, um, these things will spoil. So I make these a day or two before they all get used up. Uh, it's raining outside today, perfect opportunity to make some patties. Um, <clears throat> if you plan on, on doing this once in the spring and then hanging on to them for a long period of time, keep them in the freezer. Um, and then they won't spoil, they'll stay fresh and good and use them throughout the season, uh, throughout the spring <clears throat> or fall. That's a different, a, a different uh, conversation. Um, so yeah, just keep them in your freezer. And when you take them out, let them warm up before you go out to the bee yard. Because what you don't want is you don't want to take uh, frozen ice patties and put them on top of your cluster of winter bees. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how I make my pollen patties. Thanks for watching. And uh, until next time, best beekeeping.